Hi, I'm Warren Sprouse. You're on the Bible Forum. We're here every Sunday night from 8 to 10 p.m. Eastern Time. Love for you to join us live. We've got some folks in the chat room. They'll chat you up. Four incidents got my attention this week. Both have to do with what we're teaching our children. The first thing I learned was if you disagree with someone, beat them up. A 13-year-old Houston girl has died at Texas Children's Hospital nearly a week after the middle school student was allegedly attacked by other teens while walking home from school. Now the Houston Police Department is investigating whether her death was a homicide. Seems on Thursday afternoon, Kashala Francis made it about a block after leaving Attic's middle school before she was jumped by fellow students, according to her mother. A video of the incident reportedly shows the teen being punched multiple times and being kicked in the head. Kashala told her mother what happened, but insisted she was fine, despite some bruising to her face. Two days later, the girl complained of a headache before slipping into a coma from which she never awakened. The 13-year-old was rushed to the hospital, placed in intensive care. Doctors discovered Kashala had a, quote, large tumor in the back of her head, and she had fluid building up in her brain, end of quote. She passed away Wednesday morning. Now, in the interest of objectivity, the medical community and police are not calling this manslaughter. They believe the girl had the tumor before the beating. And they're saying this, in my view, as if the beating had nothing to do with her death. We had fights when I was in school. Nobody died. Well, they might have died from embarrassment in some cases. What's different about today? It used to be we waited for children to have fun, learn their way around, and have a need to know before we started dumping adult issues on their little heads. We used to bring children along gradually in harmony with their ability to handle the information and their need to know. Today, we have two-year-olds being encouraged to think of themselves as whatever gender they please, as if they know. By the way, a recent survey given to all Austin Independent School District students as young as the third grade and since the 2003-2004 school year, tells children, quote, sex is what a person is born, gender is how a person feels, end of quote. If we were in church, I'd say, you got a verse for that? If we were in a science class, I'd say, have you got anything to back that up? The survey goes on to ask pupils to select whether they feel they are a girl woman or whether they feel they are a boy man or whether they feel that they have an identity or can identify in some other way. The test also provided a blank box where students were asked to describe how you identify. The student climate survey was obtained by the Federalist through an open records request. The Austin Independent School District has been administering this survey to grades 3 through 11 since the school year 2003-2004. Case in point, actress Charlene Theron, truly one of the more beautiful women in movies. Charlize has announced her son is really a girl. I don't think her son knows that yet. He's two years old. He probably doesn't even know how to hold a fork and a knife. Then there are a number of websites that sell a range of sexual paraphernalia, which also include instructional manuals and 
children's books promoting transgender ideology, along with equipment to assist children in disguising their so-called birth sex, as well as appearing as the opposite sex. I'm always offended by the word sex. It's really opposite gender. It exposes their ignorance with the language. Parents are being sucked in by transgender ideology and have been informed by members of the medical community, school staff, and or educators that they have no choice but to assist their child's transition, regardless of any misgivings on their part, regardless of any understandable revulsion at providing small children with fake penises and other such equipment. I have actually seen this happen in real life to people I know and thought were intelligent. And there are transgender YouTube stars, Jazz Jennings being among the most famous. Jennings' video on transition has over 1.2 million hits, and the channel has over 600,000 subscribers. That's just a little less than mine. So, why are impressionable children permitted to watch such things? Where are the parents? Oh, they're at work, watching their own YouTubes, tweeting to friends, buried in their phones when they're supposed to be training children in the way they should go. In another part of this, abortion rights activist and actress Martha Plimpton was on stage with Dr. Willie Parker recently when she noted, I also had my first abortion at the Seattle Planned Parenthood. Yay, she said to the applause and to the cheers of the audience. Notice I said first, she said, and I don't want you guys to feel insecure but it was my best one. Heads and tails above the rest. If I could yelp review it, she said in further laughter. Heads and tails. A comment from Allison Centofante of the pro-life group Live Action at an event on June 6th of 2017 was recently spotlighted on Twitter. She apparently tweeted that her abortionist, Dr. Parker, is, quote, a smarter, better dressed Dr. Kermit Gosnell. She was referring to the Philadelphia abortionist sentenced to life in prison without parole for murdering babies after failed abortions. Why? Well, because as she wrote, instead of breaking their necks outside the womb, Dr. Parker breaks those necks inside the womb. And at this, both of them laugh. Actor Kevin Sorbo, known for his roles in movies with Christian themes, including God's Not Dead, tweeted, Wow, how pathetic. Happy little murderers. Amazing. At the event, Dr. Parker was introduced by the founders of a group called Shout Your Abortion, Lindy West and Amelia Bonau. Before that event, Nicole Brodeur quoted extensively from Parker's book, book entitled A Life's Work, A Moral Argument for Choice, asking Parker if he worried what awaited him when he faced God. He says, I meet God every day with the people who need my help. I know God, and God will know me. I don't believe that people who say they know God will have any say in that. Last month, abortion rights activist Candy Russell accused Parker of committing inappropriate and predatory behavior toward her. Parker, of course, denied the allegations, insisting he has never had sex with anyone without obtaining their consent or giving mine. It seems any liberal, countercultural, anti Christian idea is now right, good, defensible. While the biblical principles that make people strong and nations great is just useless silliness. 
And that's what we're teaching our children one way or another. 